Okay, um, hi everyone. I just wanted to say a quick welcome today to, we've got Annika and Tim here. They are, um, clarify for me, you guys are the directors, co-directors of the Barkley movie. Um, this is based on the Barkley marathons, um, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, and you can find out more about them at barkleymovie.com, so be sure to check that out. Tim and Annika, welcome. Thanks. Thank you guys. Thanks for having us. So um, I want to start sort of back at the beginning, uh, since that's where most good stories start. Tell us a little bit about uh, how you guys sort of got involved in, in the Barkley Marathons. I mean, what is, what is the Barkley Marathons for people watching this who don't know? Um, you want to take that one? Yeah, it's sort of <laughs> two questions, I guess. Uh, we'll start with the, the sure. first part um, being uh, that we found out about it through reading an article in uh, the Believer magazine. Um, we're actually here right now at Annika's, and uh, I was here one day and, and found an article and started reading it, and I just couldn't believe you know, what I was reading. It seemed like a piece of fiction. And um, I'm not uh, an athlete, and I would never um, voluntarily have picked up an a athletic sport magazine. <laughs> But this was very uh, a very compelling story and very colorful, interesting characters that seemed to be involved. And so, um, you know, showed the article to Annika. And she was blown away too, and it sort of stuck in the back of her heads. And um, this, you know, we had a project that had to end it in the um, late winter, I guess. And so we found ourselves with some free time and wanted to, you know, fill that with something creative. And so we. Uh, we remembered this and just went for it. Um, so you came to I it completely, I mean, two non-runners uh, and all of a sudden here you are with, uh, what is this, yeah. considered one of the hardest marathons in certainly North America, right? Yeah, some point. people, that's what some people say, they call it the hardest trail race in the world, actually, we've oh, heard. Wow. But, um, you know, people have all sorts of opinions about that and we're certainly <laughs> not going to get in on that discussion at all. We can only vouch for what we've seen. But, um, yeah. yeah, it would just happen to be something that that we caught both of our interests and we are you know, sort of couldn't believe that no one had made uh, a documentary about it before. Um, there are definitely videos on YouTube and various things that people have put up, but we just thought it was everything about it was just perfect for for creating a film there's nothing out there that's cohesive again from you know we could just from the videos that are probably out there now and photographs you could easily put together a story of you know 2012 um, or any of the previous years um, but we really wanted to make something a little more um, narrative and uh, you know something from the beginning uh, because to us that you know it's a really amazing story of how it began and and why it continues and so there's there's much more to it than just uh, the actual the race. annual event itself <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about the kind of the history of the race like where did i mean certainly um my big question is why why barkley marathons what's with the uh seems in a natural plural that took me a little while to get used to right but. Yeah, it started out, um, it actually didn't start out as a 100-mile race. It started out just as a couple marathons um, initially when um, Lazarus Lake and Raw Dog created the race. Um, they, uh, the story goes that um, uh, James O'Reilly, who killed Martin Luther King Jr., was in prison at Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary, which is just right on the border of Frozen Head State Park. And um, he, he was an escape artist. And <laughs> he, he was. He, he had escaped earlier in his life from another prison for years. And uh, he escaped from that, that prison and ran up into the hills and was caught not long after, uh, 50, 55 hours later, and had only gone about eight miles. Oh, and wow. so when they heard this story, Lazarus Lake, uh, you know, thought to himself, he was an ultra runner, you know, it's like I could, he knew that area and he's like, I could have run a hundred miles in 55 hours. And so that was the, that was the start of the race. <laughs> um, I assume that ended up being uh, not quite as corrected he, as he had yeah. originally posited. 
he tried it. Yeah, and he, now he's tried to run a couple of times in the beginning, but uh, he actually never was able to do it. He made it very yeah. so difficult that he himself couldn't do. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's many marathons, and now it's now it's basically well, amazingly, he he changes the course almost every year, and it it's always hmm. amazingly exactly a hundred miles. Huh. <laughs> and, um, but most people say that each loop that people do is more like an actual marathon, that it's closer to, to 26 miles, 26.2. The runners swear that it's, you know, 25, 26, somewhere in their miles. So the, every loop they do is really they're doing, you know, they're doing a marathon each time. And, the, you know, the goal is to do five of them oh, wow. in under 60 hours. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't seem, to us, um, it doesn't seem, you know, when you start to do the math, you know, you hear about people doing 100 milers in, you know, 15 hours or, you know, crazy times or 24 hours and different, uh, different events. So it didn't seem that impossible, but then you actually go and you, you know, you visit the terrain. Yeah. And we're like, you know, there's no way. So yeah. this is, this is way out in, now it's Western Tennessee, correct? Eastern, Eastern Tennessee. Uh, Eastern Tennessee, excuse me. Yeah. Eastern Tennessee. So, um, so what is the... I mean, what were some of the, the, if I'm thinking about doing this race, what are the course hazards? And then for you guys filming it, um, kind of how did you get in among what, you know, I recall a uh, specific piece from the uh, Kickstarter film that sounded like briars, big, big nasty briars. Uh, they said one piece would, would come down and get you from the back when you tried to free yourself, so. Yeah, we definitely have evidence of that for many people <laughs> from this year's race. I think ours have healed up, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's, I don't think one runner returned without, Unscathed. you know, yeah. The, yeah, the terrain itself is, is um, the elevation for each loop is like 11,000 elevation gain and loss. That's just for one loop, so if you do it five times, you can imagine. Um, there isn't really a trail, there are maybe about 50% are, are trails um, of the park, but most of it is you have to find your way with just a map and a compass. Um, the, there, there's like loose gravel. You're always, the people are scrambling up hills, kind of hanging onto trees. Um, the saw briars will definitely cut you up. Um, you're running day and night. Um, there can be fog, rain, snow, hail. This year there was, it was really hot. <laughs> which was also not so great for the runners. Yeah. Um, for the first time, I think, maybe in the race's history, the, the spring had come so early, at least yeah. by three weeks, that it had changed the terrain for the, uh, the veterans that were used to running. Mm. You know, even though you might be not completely on track, you can see through the trees at that time of year. Well, mm. spring had come just in time to, to take that out of, uh, you know, <laughs> out of their tool kit so yeah. they could longer do that yeah. so it made it that much more difficult navigation wise so you've got a couple of guys it sounds like who um have have attempted this now if i recall correctly you said there were only 10 people who in the history of this race had ever completed it yeah uh, prior the, to this year yeah in 25 years so they've got they've got a couple of people who keep <laughs> they keep coming back for more even after mm -hmm. all of that they have a, there are a lot of repeat offenders for sure <laughs> um some people um some people are kind of staples uh, of the event. You know, they just love it so much that they come back every year. I mean, there are people that have been coming for 20-some years. Yeah, I think it was like 17 years. or You know, and maybe they don't do, you know, they go out and do what they can to, to sort of join the camaraderie of the weekend. Mm. But by no means, you know, are their intentions to, to <laughs> run 100 miles. But, you know, maybe they'll get a loop in. You know, this year was a uh, pretty great thing that um, the – Historian for the Barkley, his name's Frozen Ed, mm -hmm. had um, managed two loops. He did which, two loops. That was know, his goal. Wow. Which was his goal. So it was, you know, we're all pretty proud of him for that. That was pretty fantastic. Um, yeah, you're. I mean, you are really lucky and quite brave and in shape. If you can make one loop, if you can do one loop, that's like that's pretty big. So <laughs> you can imagine what what people are like after five. So you don't get a lot of guys coming into this hoping to break any records then, I assume. <laughs> well, actually, That's... this year, that um, was definitely the case. Um, hmm. 
Brett Mowney, who uh, won, who actually finished five loops last year, he was the only finisher last year, um, came back this year to to set some records, and um, and he definitely achieved that. He uh, he beat the speed record by like three hours, I think. Oh wow! Um, <laughs> so which is unprecedented. First two-time finisher in the history of the race. Yes, wow. he also. Yeah. And um, this was also the first year where uh, three people finished. So it instantly went from 10 in 25 years to 13 in 26, 26. years. Although one of them was a two-time finisher. So officially yeah, 12, <laughs> 12 people. 12 <laughs> distinct, yeah. <laughs> but it was, we definitely picked a year um, just miraculously to, to, to do this. Um, and it all sort of happened very quickly. And we all so we kind of decided to do it, and then we had to ramp up very fast and figure out what we could do in the short amount of time that we had, um, and it just happened to be a year that that no one I don't think would have imagined all of that happening. In addition to you know two people trying to do something like this independently, and uh, again you know kind of ramping up as she said so quickly, we also had. Um, very specific restrictions placed on us by the race director. Uh, we were invited, you know, we were sanctioned by him, and you know, he was definitely excited about having us there. But at the same time, this was not our event. This was the runners' event. We were just guests, so he did not want to interrupt um, the their experience at all. So you know, there are certain points on the trail where you were so far from camp that. You, he didn't want to all of a sudden have a runner run into a camera operator and say, right. "Whoa, <laughs> which way did the rails go?" <laughs> so, um, you know, to keep that intact, there were many, many miles of the course that we actually never even got to see. We weren't allowed mm -hmm. to go. To. Although so, we were lucky enough to have a couple uh, people who, on their own, had decided to to uh, take a camera with them which people do every now and then, and then they sh very quickly realize that this is not the place <laughs> for um, But we did get some footage um, on, the, on the course that otherwise we never would have um, been able to, to do so. And, mm -hmm. and also it, it, didn't, you know, it didn't affect anyone because they were kind of doing it they were the um, ones, for yeah. themselves. Yeah. So, um, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> From what I've seen, that seems like a... A bit of a bold move to be, you know, was it like helmet cams or like handhelds? Yeah, yeah one of them had a chest cam and mm -hmm. um, it was the uh, one of the volunteers and then uh, another guy had one on his wrist but he would take it off every once in a while. You know, he was, uh, he was more out there I think to enjoy the experience and so he would stop and actually take a lot of uh, video and pictures of um, different parts of the course and different, you know, people he was running alongside with. So, you know, different people kind of went out there with different goals. Some people, their goal was to break the records and other people <laughs> to, you know, kind of push themselves to their own individual limit and also enjoy the, the event. Interesting. So, uh, so then for you guys, there are just, I mean, in addition to, were there any special challenges uh, in trying to get a film crew out to some of these areas? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, you you want to kind of clone yourself or clone your own attitude, to, you know, and, you know, we're so excited about doing it. It's like, you know, I'd love to go out and, and camp in one spot and wait for every runner to come through for three days, yeah. but, you know, you can't do that, so we have to try to get someone else to do it, and they, uh, you know, we got some volunteers locally, and, um, you know, they all had great, uh, not volunteers, we had, you know, Paid crew. Paid right, crew. Right. <laughs> um, but lo all local to yeah. uh, Tennessee. Mm. And um, they, once we kind of told them about the race, we definitely advertised it as what it was going to be, which was, yeah. you know, you're going to have to go sit in the woods by yourself <laughs> and wait for five hours in case someone runs by. So we definitely didn't wow. make it seem um, fancier than it was. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, we had some some great people come in and help us. And once they once they learned about the race and they were there and they saw everyone, they themselves got really excited about it. And 
by the end, you know, there was one girl who had been up at like three o'clock in the morning the night mm -hmm. before shooting. And we were like, you know, you should go home, go to sleep. You know, she lived about half hour away. And yeah. she was like, no, I'm staying. I want to <laughs> see if he finishes the race. She was yeah. like, you, I'm done, yeah. but I'm sitting here and waiting to find out what happens. Because she pulled up her chair right next to the finish right line. She's the <laughs> so, you know, they got into it too. It was really great. Yeah. And I, I don't know how you could not, if you were in that camp or if you're on that um, track, you're, you're going to get sucked into it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we've never been around anything like this. And then the whole next day, we we're both kind of emotional messes over, <laughs> you know, just couldn't believe like the final <laughs> finish just literally brought us to tears. It's like this guy just pushed himself, you know, to the limit. And uh, it was fascinating to watch. Yeah. The third, the third finisher this year had 19 minutes to spare and the time cut oh, off. Wow. So we were just <laughs> waiting to see whether he was going to make it or not. Yeah, by a hair. Jeez. Yeah, it was very exciting. And the whole race is now they get 60, as in six zero hours to finish this. That's the yeah. cutoff, yeah. So he wow. came in at, you know, 59, 59 40. 40. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Fan of the close shave, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And we were kind of sitting, we knew where he was supposed to come out in the. Uh, by this pavilion at the park and it was getting dark and then mm -hmm. it was, and then it was dark. And so we were basically looking, um, for a headlamp out there and, and Tim saw it and mm -hmm. we're like, yeah, we were the first ones to see him. We were so excited because we didn't know, you know, everybody's literally watching their clock and, mm -hmm. uh, and so was he. And so was he. As yeah. he was running, yeah. you keep seeing him looking, looking <laughs> down at his watch to see if he's going to make it in time. Yeah. Although I imagine from the sounds of it, even finishing at all, you know, even a few minutes after would have been something, but. It really yeah. would have been, but at the same time, he yeah. wanted to make it under that time limit because if you, if you don't make it under that time limit, yes, you've still accomplished it, but you're not an actual, you're not like, a finisher. finisher. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. he had exactly, I think, like 12 hours to do it, so he could not make one mistake in terms of orienteering or anything. Otherwise he wouldn't have, uh, he wouldn't have made it. Some of the front runners had sort of banked a little bit of time. They had done their first, you know, two loops so quickly. And, uh, John on the third one, you know, the third, uh, finisher didn't really have that much time when he went out for his fifth. And so he really, as she said, he couldn't make a mistake. Um, you know, luckily he didn't. He also hadn't slept at all. Yeah. Yeah, I don't imagine you do during most of these, <laughs> <laughs> trying to break a record like that. Yeah. So now in terms of orienteering, like these guys are, when they're out there, are they completely on their own? I assume it's like no aid stations, no, you know, nobody checking up on them more or less. Yeah, there's no, uh, there's no race staff at all on the course. It's only runners. Matter of fact, anybody who's not in a race is discouraged uh, from being out there at all. Although it does, uh, you know, some people can't help themselves but go to a couple scenic places. There's, there's one spot that lets, <laughs> lets people go to at the lookout tower, which mm. you are allowed to go and, and see people. Uh, so there's no one helping you in a direction. There's no one helping you with aid. There's nothing. So um, orienteering is, is definitely something that is, has to be part of your skill set. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you're not going to make it. And no, no electronics, no GPS, no altimeter are allowed. Oh, wow. um, just map and a compass. And then the, the only checkpoints on the course to make sure that you followed um, the route are the 10 books that they hide out on, hmm. along, the, along the course. And each loop you get a different bib number. And each time you go around the loop, the first two are clockwise, the second two are counterclockwise, just to make huh. it a little bit more um, <laughs> interesting. Just when um, you thought you had it down, right? Yeah, you change it up on you. <laughs> um, so you have to tear that page number from each book along the way, and that's and and then you bring them up to the gate between each loop. And if you don't have those those ten pages, you are not allowed to go on. Oh wow! So that gets interesting when people get very tired because they're like, "Did I get? Did I pull that page out? I don't remember." And then they're like <laughs> looking through their baggies, you know, with. Mm. Hallucinations is another yeah. uh, element of it, apparently, that, <laughs> especially on the fifth loop. Yeah, yeah. people get very tired. Oh, wow. So these <laughs> guys, they, do they, are the books, like, 
easy to find or they, is it pretty clear where they are or do they Thanks. intentionally make that difficult? <laughs> kind of depends on who you ask. If you ask yeah. the race director, it's very clear. Put it's it right there on the trail. <laughs> And if you ask me, I have no idea. I could be looking right at it, and I would have no idea. You know, yeah. it's a paperback book, so it's you know, it's this big, and it's wrapped in plastic, and then tucked in, you know, maybe under a tree or literally under a, a like under a rock, fifty pound rock. Or something. And he's like, "Oh, that's obvious. I'll see that there." We're like, what? Isn't it obvious that a person put that rock there? <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, so that can that makes it difficult, uh, even more difficult, I guess, along the way. But the books are hand selected by um, the race director to uh, add a little bit of dark humor to the uh, experience <laughs> for the runners. Each Did you one. Give you an idea of what they were this year? Or? Is uh, that top secret? <laughs> No, I don't that, think I so. Think I think they, okay, yeah. Yeah, they change every they year. They change every year, so mm. it doesn't really matter. What was the one at the prison, the, the human zoo? Like there's a they run they actually run by um, an area and there was one called the Human Zoo. One was up the down staircase, I think, at the at, Death, the, yeah. at the fire tower. You know, something like pulpy, like death is in, you know imminent. Something like that. You know, <laughs> yeah. just nice. Anything to sort of taunt the runners and their, you know, I think they all get a little bit of enjoyment out of it. Yeah. You know, at least on the first loop. <laughs> Yeah, I imagine the second or third time you see that, you're probably yeah, yeah. not so funny Done. anymore. <laughs> but that's all part of the fun is, uh, you know, most most of this race, it, it's hard to say like percentage wise, but I think equal amounts, you know, physicality and and equal amounts just mental toughness because mm. if you don't have you know enough of either one, you are just there's no way that you are going to make it. Yeah. So. So he definitely likes, Laz definitely likes to uh, mess with with the <laughs> minds of the runners just to, you know, make sure that they actually want to be in this race. So he takes pretty careful uh, care about how they, they, so how many people participate? I mean, is this a reasonably small race most years? It is. You, you have to apply to get in it, and there are around uh, 35 people each year. You know, there's there's a lot of reasons for that number, but the main reason is um, you know he has um, an agreement with the environmental um, elements of the park. Um, you know because so much of it is um, off trail. Right. You know right. having m much more uh, or a much larger number than that would start to uh, you know act detrimentally towards the environment. So um, it helps in a lot of ways. You know keep. Um, the damage down, but then also keeps the whole thing, I think, sort of manageable. Yeah. You know, the frozen head, the square, you know, acreage is huge, but the uh, the actual camp campground where everybody sort of base camps is is really not that large. So, um, thirty five seems to be a, a very good number that he said. Yeah. <laughs> and also just the element of when people go out there and you know are on their own that's sort of part of it as well. So there, there aren't, you know, hundreds of people running right. along and, oh, you'll see someone and just follow them. Like, no, once yeah. you get lost and everyone gets lost <laughs> at some point or other, um, including him. <laughs> that sounds like an interesting story. Yeah, is that a... Uh... <laughs> once you're lost, you're lost and no one else is going to run by you to help you. So they, I assume they have teams or something that... that at least would go back and, you know, sort of sweep to find whoever is... No, not really. <laughs> I mean, he Tim... has. I had a special circumstance where, you know, since I wasn't a runner, there were some people that volunteered to <laughs> help me out. But if you are a runner, um, you, they will not come looking for you until it is absolutely beyond the end of the race. Oh, wow. Yeah. Be very, very, very lost. lost. <laughs> it took the the record was is still I think um, two miles and it took thirty two hours for someone to get back to camp. Jeez. So that one I think they were like just on the edge of like should we send someone actually looking for this person? Yeah. But no, they had waited thirty two hours for someone, and I don't think anyone had had heard from him or seen him in that Jeez. long. So. so that's now the benchmark. Yeah. <laughs> 
32 hours, they don't, you know, bat an eye. And after that, well, maybe we should think about it. Tim, has that ever been a problem for them? I mean, that seems like a bit of a liability. One of my favorite quotes from the race director is, self-extraction has a proud history at the Barclay. <laughs> you know, nice. a, a lot of the race is exactly that, is uh, the elements of self-reliance. Yeah, because even if you do end up quitting, you know, in the middle of a loop, you're just like, I can't go on anymore. Yeah. You have a good four hour, at least, hike back. That's to, if you know where you're camp. going. That's if, yeah, that's if you right. can find it back. So, um, <laughs> one runner brought one of our uh, camera operators, I think, to uh, drive him back. But <laughs> nice. we'll have to save that for <laughs> Nice. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, I appreciate you guys being here and chatting about this. I want to make sure that I'm respectful of your time. Um, so, uh, again, you know, uh, are there kind of closing things that, that you want people to be aware of here other than, I mean, the movie itself, obviously check it out at uh, Barkley. That's B A R K L E Y movie.com. Um, and you guys have a Kickstarter project uh, that uh, actually I looked right before this. It looks like you just got funded. So congratulations. Just, just, did, yeah. just now we made our goal. I'm very excited. Now it's you know. great. Um, yeah, we're, we're very, very happy that we actually did that. It's been a mm. it's been a long couple of weeks of of getting ready and then shooting and then now we just got back. We're gonna leave um, on Saturday again for um, for some more shooting and post race interviews and and the like. Um, but we are just really excited that um, that people want to see this and I think we got some really great footage um, at the event. And it's, I think it's going to turn out really well. We do have a lot of work ahead of us, but um, we kind of, you know, we're just excited to, um, to make something great that people, people want to see, it seems like. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. even if it's just, you know, that we're happy with it, that Laz is happy with it, that, that the runners who were there this year are happy with it, that's, that's kind of our goal. That's is the goal. That, we want we want those people who who are who are part of it and um, to to be happy with the final product. So yeah, if anyone wants to check it out, we're going to try and cut something together, a little just little snippets of some of the footage that we shot um, just in the last week or or recently, I guess we should say um, that uh, we're going to put up on the Kickstarter page. So if anyone Very wants cool. to check that out. Very cool. Movie that exactly. And even though we met our goal. Yeah. Yep, still, exactly. Still, <laughs> actually, right now, that's probably the only guaranteed way you will ever actually see this movie is to, <laughs> is to get either the stream or the, or the DVD of it through Kickstarter. So if you do want to see what the Barclays about, um, yeah, you can, you can throw a couple bucks our way. Well, I can tell you from the trailer, um, anybody who's watching this video right now should go and watch the trailer, and then you will definitely contribute to this project, because it looks <laughs> really, really cool. So, The um, opening is a, a little contrived, but it's uh, we wanted to give everybody the experience of what the runners go through, because that yeah. is actually what they receive as a, a condolence letter. <laughs> that Fair enough. That's... Uh, it's an, it looks like a great project. I'm really uh, excited, actually, to see that myself. So uh, thanks again, Annika and Tim, for taking the time to sit down with me. Again, uh, watching the video, head over to the Kickstarter page, barkleymovie.com, uh, and we'll talk to you guys at uh, some point in the future. I Thank, hope. You Thank you so much, much. Tim. Right. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Thank you, guys. Us.